Well, in real life, we spend a lot of time talking with guests, and I love it. I love finding out about them. And, and yet some have asked, why don't I share a little bit about what's happened in my life? And I'm grateful to share that. If anything, Jeremiah 1, verses 4 and 5, um, are really the verses of my life where it says that God from the womb ordained Jeremiah to be a prophet, one who would hold forth the word of God to the nations. That's a, an amazing calling, and I wouldn't put myself next to Jeremiah, but I would say that I know for a fact that God has called me uh, from the womb. I was born January 15, 1958, but it's the things that led up to that that was a challenge um, in the sense that my mom was abandoned by my dad, she was pregnant, and as she entered into the Christmas season in 1957, it was on Christmas Eve, uh, December 24th, 1957, that my mom, in fear um, and having two younger children, she just basically could, just caved into the pressure and she attempted an abortion uh, to end this pregnancy, to end my life. And, um, and for that, um, she suffered greatly. She was taken to the hospital when discovered and um, it was there uh, in San Diego where on January 15th I was born. You know, you would think, well, what a sad story that is. But you know what, not really, in the sense that God had a plan. Even through the years where I grew up, I was just a severe stutter. I stuttered from the moment a kid was supposed to start learning how to speak, all the way through to when the Lord touched my tongue, and it was a miraculous thing. But growing up like that, as a child, you can certainly imagine and remember how it was for you as a child. Just trying to blend in really mattered. And when you couldn't blend in uh, because you stuttered, as I did, it was just really embarrassing and uh, teased a lot, mistreated a lot, and, uh, and abused, and never really wanted in the home. My dad was, uh, uh, you know, didn't want this pregnancy, and so I never felt the closeness, I could never really get close to my dad. So I felt a lot of rejection. and. Um, and yet, you know, in the midst of all that stuff, um, you grow up trying to earn your dad's approval. That's the way God has wired kids. And uh, isn't it funny, we try to earn our father's approval, yet all the while knowing, from now, now I know that from the scriptures, we already have our father's approval through Jesus Christ. But I grew up a very angry guy, very violent guy. Uh, in 1975, I found out about this story I'm telling you right now um, by an accident. My mom didn't know I was even in the room when I overheard her sharing the story with a neighbor. Um, but, you know, when you're young, I was, 1975, I was a junior in high school. I didn't care about that stuff. It didn't matter to me. Uh, but on June 20th, that's a Monday night, 1977, uh, I stumbled into Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. Had no intentions to go there. Saw a lot of people flowing into this building. I thought, what's going on there? And I went in and Pastor Greg Laurie of Harvest Christian Fellowship fame or the Harvest Crusade fame was given the Word of God faithfully as he did and as he does now today and and I heard the gospel for the first time in my life it blew my mind I was convicted sick to my stomach and wound up uh, through Pastor Greg's invitation getting up that night and going forward and accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior I was born again Jesus said in John 3 verse starting at verse 3, that you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. Of course, I didn't even know anything about the Bible, but I heard the word of God that night and knew it was true. I just knew it was true. And God began a work in my life uh, of bringing me into his kingdom. And little did I know that all the stuff of my, my upbringing and all the pain of that stuff, um, God was about to radically convert. That, that brings uh, to my memory a verse where the enemy has meant things in our lives for evil but God has turned around those things for good. And so for me now, I actually revel in the setbacks and the hardships and the rejection and uh, the sense of never being able to meet the standards of people around my life. I actually revel in that now because God has met every one of those crises in my life. He has come not only through for me, He has done, as the scripture says in Ephesians 3:20. He has done exceedingly abundantly beyond what I could have ever asked or thought of him. Uh, he's absolutely amazing. And um, I hope you know him like that. I hope you understand him like that.
God has a purpose for your family. Turn Around at Home, the newly released book by Jack and Lisa Hibbs, co-authored with Kurt Bruner, draws from their own inspiring stories. This book will help you understand your emotional, spiritual, and social background. Give biblical encouragement for creating positive cycles in marriage and parenting. Offer practical ideas for becoming intentional parents as couples. Discover family patterns that can be renewed in your generation. Turnaround at Home will help you make changes for good, starting at home. For your gift of any amount, get your copy of Turnaround at Home. Order online at reallifewithjackhibbs.org or call 877-777-2346. Turnaround at Home. Get your copy today. Are the struggles of life causing you to doubt who you are, where your journey in life is headed? Jesus Christ provides comfort and peace in the midst of your doubt. You only need to believe. It's our desire that through Jesus Christ you will know real life. So having gotten born again, as Jesus said, I knew God's Holy Spirit was now in my life because I began to think different. What? That was one of the amazing, uh, immediate um, revelations that I knew I now belonged to God was my thoughts began to change. My thoughts about God, my thoughts about myself, my thoughts about life changed, and I needed that very badly. Angry, hurt, bitter. Um, I displayed that previously uh, by violence. Um, uh, I was angry, and so I would look for opportunities to vent, and and maybe there's people in your life. Do you know any young people that are violent? Um, They're looking for an out. Um, and they release their uh, hurt and their pain that way. So you need to read that carefully and and deal with that prayerfully. But I can tell you right now, somehow inflicting pain on other people uh, got me to feel like I was playing my part to level the playing field because I had felt so bitter and angry. But God had a great plan. And so I, I had given my heart to Christ and I remember going to church every night of the week at Calvary Costa Mesa and learning everything I could. And about six months into that, I began to share with my friends um, about Jesus, my unbelieving friends. And uh, they absolutely blew the gospel and me off. And I remember just being dealt, as it were, a blow. And so I thought I would win them to Christ, and that didn't work. I wound up backsliding. Thank God it was for a brief period of time because God had a plan. And that was um, the meeting of my wife, Lisa, Uh, Some now would be 35 years ago. Uh, We met in Newport Beach of all places. But she loved the Lord and I loved the Lord, but I was just uh, coming to a point where I didn't have anybody I knew uh, that knew Jesus. But God, again, as I said, he had a plan and he intervened in my life and things began to happen in the sense that now I had somebody to go to church with. And Lisa and I just really got together around the word of God and strictly on a friendship basis. Uh, but as I said, God had a plan. I began falling in love with her and her passion for God, and uh, it was great. And so um, we were married in June of 1979, and um, we went to Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa and lived across the street from Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa, where Lisa later went on staff there, and we served the Lord there. But um, challenges were there. I mean, just before getting married, three weeks away from getting married, I lost a really great, well-paying job, and and all of it was, now I see, God working and preparing my life for ministry life. I was making too much money for a man my age and quite comfortable, but God uh, God had other plans, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. So, uh, just began to grow. Uh, we we love the Lord and stuff and all, but I really dove into uh, some uh, really demanding type books and got kind of legalistic and kind of um, kind of a stinker, I would think. And so God had to do a readjustment in my life. And, and he did that. Uh, in August of 1979, um, Lisa had gotten tickets from Pastor Chuck Smith uh, to go see a private screening of the Jesus film. And so I got to go with her. And uh, that movie impacted my life radically. I remember visually seeing what, a little anyway, visually as Hollywood could do it, seeing a scene when Jesus was being crucified. All of a sudden, my sin uh, became very real to me. I saw what I did to Jesus. And uh, frankly, I remember going in my room, in our apartment, 
And uh, I honestly remember, I think, I think Lisa thought I was dying or something. I wept for hours and hours, grieving over my sin and what it had done uh, to Jesus. And so, um, you know, it was, it was just a life-changing experience. And Jesus has meant everything to me. He's, God has done it all for me. And uh, he continues to do that. And, uh, you know, I just want to encourage you, no matter what's going on in your life, um, you can never regret. And I've never heard anyone ever regret that they've made a decision for Christ. And so I'm grateful. And uh, he's everything to me. God has a purpose for your family. Turn around at home. The newly released book by Jack and Lisa Hibbs, co-authored with Kurt Bruner, draws from their own inspiring stories. This book will help you understand your emotional, spiritual, and social background. Give biblical encouragement for creating positive cycles in marriage and parenting. Offer practical ideas for becoming intentional parents as couples. Discover family patterns that can be renewed in your generation. Turn Around at Home will help you make changes for good, starting at home. For your gift of any amount, get your copy of Turn Around at Home. Order online at reallifewithjackhibbs.org or call 877-777-2346. Turn Around at Home. Get your copy today. And so the amazing thing for me is so much of what I had going on in my life with my dad and, and all that, trying to earn my dad's favor, I had now become a Christian and knew that God loved me, but I thought that I had to maintain that love with God by some sort of human performance. I don't know if that's uh, the nature of everyone, but it, it was certainly my problem. And so, uh, as I mentioned, I just really got into really legalistic teachings, real, real legalistic books. And so um, with that pharisaical, self-righteous attitude, um, I read books on prayer. And that's not a bad thing, but the books I was reading was talking about how um, if I was really a Christian, if I really loved God, I would pray so many hours a day. And I got to tell you, I actually started doing that with a couple of friends of ours. Uh, we began praying, and, um, and then that wasn't enough because uh, we began praying, and I began praying, not to accomplish anything with God, but actually almost to earn approval with God, so to speak. And I remember just praying for issues in my family and stuff like that. I remember falling asleep. You ever had that happen? I'd fall asleep in prayer and um, kind of embarrassing to admit, but I, I remember finding I would just strip down and go into my bathtub in, in our apartment and I would get on my hands and knees and pray for hours every morning at four o'clock in the morning. I would pray from four to seven, crying out to God and all this stuff. And little did I know at the time, but my motive was all self-righteous. It was almost like when I got done praying like that, I would get up and walk out feeling, though I'd never say it, hey, God, did you see that? Did you experience that? I was with you so long, and, and you must be impressed now. And I translated my earthly upbringing with my earthly dad into my new heavenly relationship, and that's not what God wanted. It's not what he wanted at all. And so, you know, I basically, I gave, I gave up. I told God I can't do this anymore. I remember taking my Bible and throwing it across the room because I was so angry. I thought that Christianity was fantastic, but I couldn't fit in. And I remember just being so dejected uh, by my lack of spirituality. And, uh, man, I tell you, the teaching of the Word of God and hearing that I could be filled with the Holy Spirit and empowered by God wound up making all the difference in the world for me. And, it changed my life. And so here's yet again another chapter where God begins to work. Uh, I remember going to a Thursday night afterglow service. And afterglow service is what um, uh, we did where after the teaching midweek study, we'd spend time waiting upon the Lord. And as I was there in this room, there's about 700 people. That's about how many of the rooms sat. And I remember in my mind, which is a beautiful place to be if you're a person who stutters, because you don't stutter in your mind. You don't stutter in your head. And I remember crying out to God, and I just said, God, you know, I, I, if you just do something with my life, I would love to be able to tell people about you. I'd love to be able to tell people about your power and your saving grace and, and what you've done for me. So I really began to appreciate more of what God had done in my life. And uh, some stranger to me to this moment 
said, you know, there's somebody in the room right now praying that God would touch him and heal him. And uh, this, this person wants to be used by God. He wants to be a, a you know, mouthpiece for God. Oh, man, that got my attention. And he said, God wants you to study the Bible and to become proficient, and not be ashamed of the Word of God and, and know it inside and out. Well, right then and there, I knew that was for me. And so I turned to my wife, Lisa, and I said, the, 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 that was for, 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 for me. <laughs> I stuttered to her announcing, that was for me. And, um, you know, we just went home after that. And I just knew that God had spoken. I knew something was going on in my life. And lo and behold, it was um, sometime later, uh, somewhere just around 1983, if I remember. I was at uh, Babel Island. And I was with a group of friends, including my wife, Lisa, and they were all out witnessing and sharing uh, the love of God and evangelism. But I couldn't do that because I couldn't talk right. But I would go with them and pray. And as they were ministering, I was praying, and I saw someone sitting on a little uh, walkway that goes over the, a waterway there. And uh, as I saw that person sitting there, I really felt the Lord pull on my heart. Um, you know, go talk to this person. Go share with that person. And so as I did that... Uh, I walked over there. I was dying. I was sweating bullets. I was terrified. But I went over there and I said to this person sitting in this light post, I said, excuse me, but would you mind if I shared Jesus Christ with you in his story? And that person said, no, not at all. Well, that was amazing. First of all, it was amazing because the opportunity was provided to me. Secondly, I shared the gospel with this young person. And I was so excited after that, I went and I found my wife and friends who were out sharing, and I said, hey, guess what happened? I just shared Jesus to someone without stuttering. And I remember my wife Lisa saying, you're not stuttering now. And from that moment on, I can't tell you what happened. I can't explain it. Uh, people have always tried to analyze, you know, what happened to me. Look, God touched me. He touched me in that moment, and uh, from that time, uh, I've not stopped talking about Jesus. And it wasn't too long after that. In fact, it was 1986, just a few years later, that God led us out to Chino Hills, California, and uh, just an awesome hill country of Southern California, a beautiful place. And we moved out there with our two young children. And um, make a long story short, we began to um, have a Monday night Bible study at the encouragement of uh, some pastors and friends of ours at Costa Mesa, they began to encourage us, you ought to start a home Bible study. And so we started a Monday night home Bible study. Uh, one of the reasons was we didn't know anybody in the area. And so we began meeting to meet people in the Word of God, in prayer, fellowship, food. And God began to bring people from the street, from the neighborhood. People began to come on Monday nights. And that Monday night Bible study, by the way, uh, grew from six people to on Monday nights we had a hundred people in a little house that began to expand in a couple other homes on a Monday night. And so as that grew, it was quite crazy for me because I was now working at a company called Baxter Healthcare in uh, Irvine, Newport Beach area. And I had my career. I had my, uh, and it was a wonderful job and I was planning on staying there till retirement time. But as the home study grew, people began to want, they were asking us, to meet on Sundays to become a church. And I remember strongly rebuking them when they did that. I just said, you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't flirt and play with such a thing. This is, that's a, a God-ordained thing. You don't even know what you're talking about. And you get back to your church on Sunday because that's where you belong. And so the Mondays just continued to begin to, to take off. And I actually became the biggest opponent to what was happening. I undermined the own ministry that was going on by encouraging people to go somewhere else. Uh, I encouraged them to serve at their church. I thought, well, maybe if they served at the church, they wouldn't be coming to the Monday night Bible study. Well, to make a long story short, um, I went to Pastor Chuck's office, and I had shared with him in 1989. I said, listen, something's got to happen. This Bible study has gotten out of hand. He knew all along. We were keeping him uh, informed of it. And um, I said, you need to find a pastor for this work out there. And Chuck said, oh, you know, I'll look into that. And he said, in the meantime, you need to get the process going for it to become a church. And I thought, this is not going the way I planned. And uh, Pastor Chuck Smith pulled his desk drawer open, and he had a beautiful, ornate, must have been an antique, cigar box, if 
you know what I'm talking about. They're beautiful. They had all kinds of amazing artwork on them. And he had a rubber band around it. And he opened it up. And inside that cigar box was checks and cash that people had sent to Calvary Costa Mesa from the Monday Night Bible Study with the request, we want to become a church. I had no idea. They didn't, no one told me this was happening. And so Chuck Smith said, here's a phone number to an attorney, my attorney, call this guy, and he'll set up the paperwork process for the work out in Chino Hills to become a church. And I said, well, that's fine. I'll do that as long as you find a pastor. And he said, okay. Well, in a couple other meetings back at his office, I was complaining to him about how you need to find a pastor. Uh, little did I know that it was around lunchtime. I'll never forget it. Pastor Chuck gets up from his desk, walks over, and puts his hand on my shoulder, and he says, Lord, bless what's happening in Chino Hills. May the fruit of it abide forever. And he walked out his office door into the front office area, and I sat in his office waiting for him to return. I don't know, 10 minutes went by, seemed like eternity. He didn't come back. His secretary stuck her head in the door, and she said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm meeting with Pastor Chuck. She goes, well, no, you're not. He went home. Well, that was the end of our meeting. Two weeks later, in the mail, I receive my ordination certificate from Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, signed by Pastor Chuck and the board at Costa Mesa. I had no idea what was going on. But the bottom line was I just stayed at teaching the Word of God. I just, just stayed at that, and God began to bless tremendously. And in 1992, I wound up resigning from Baxter Healthcare, which was a hard thing to do, but it was an obedient thing to do. I knew I had to do it. He's always been good, and God will always be good to you, and he still is good to me, and I trust him to always be good to me. No matter what happens in life, he's going to be good to me. He's going to be good to you. Even in the time of suffering, my friend, we'll all suffer. Don't ever think that God has abandoned you in suffering. In fact, for the Christian, God gets closer, if that's possible, during a time of suffering, because he's never abandoned me. And when I thought I'm worthless, I was not wanted, I was a failed abortion, I couldn't do anything right, I was violent and angry at the world, and I wanted to repay the world for the pain, I wanted to settle the score. And God took all of that, and he began to wash my soul. If I could leave anything with you today, it would be this, that God is real, life is unfair. You heard me right, God is real, and life is unfair. Rather than pit those two things against one another and try to argue there is no God because life is unfair. No, because life is unfair. God is real. He's promised in the Bible the way out. And he's done that through Jesus Christ. I've never known religion. Never had it. Never experienced that in a religious or church setting. I've only known by the grace of God a relationship with Jesus. Has it had its ups and downs and its highs and lows? Absolutely. But he's never abandoned me. And Jesus said that he will never abandon you either. He has promised that all those who will come to me, I will in no wise turn away. And I'm telling you now, I've been a Christian some 36 years now almost, and he's never turned me away. He'll never turn you away. And so, as you know by now, I trust, or maybe you're new to this program here at Real Life, but it is absolutely our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life because there is no life apart from him. There's no real existence and joy and posterity and living without him. And so you, you pray. Can I lead you in a prayer right now? Will you pray? Would you? Wherever you're at, can you just stop for a moment and pray? See if God is real for you. Dear Lord, I pray that you would touch these right now that are listening and hearing this. And Lord, just settle it in their hearts right now that no matter what their struggle has been thus far, they can either hang on to it and become very bitter and it will destroy their life. Or they can allow you to intervene right now. You stand ready to save. And if they open up their heart to you right now, you will take all of those crises and setbacks and you'll convert them to great victories. So my friend, pray this. Dear Lord, I come to you now. Jesus, I ask you to save me from my sins. I believe today, based on the Bible, that you died on the cross and rose again from the grave. I trust you now. I give you my bitterness. I give you my hurt and my pain and my sorrow. And I ask you to change my life. Jesus, make yourself so real to me. Write my name in your book of life. I invite you into my soul. 
In Jesus' name, I pray. If you've prayed that prayer, we'd love to hear from you. Drop us a line, contact us, email us, but I'd really like to know. I'd like to know if these programs are making a difference in your life. God bless you as we continue together in our walk with Jesus. It's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life. God has a purpose for your family. Turn around at home. The newly released book by Jack and Lisa Hibbs, co-authored with Kurt Bruner, draws from their own inspiring stories. This book will help you understand your emotional, spiritual, and social background. Give biblical encouragement for creating positive cycles in marriage and parenting. Offer practical ideas for becoming intentional parents as couples. Discover family patterns that can be renewed in your generation. Turn Around at Home will help you make changes for good, starting at home. For your gift of any amount, get your copy of Turn Around at Home. Order online at reallifewithjackhibbs.org or call 877-777-2346. Turn Around at Home. Get your copy today. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history, which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who is searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life each month with a gift of your choosing. In return, our gift to you for becoming a Real Life Partner, we'd like to send you this Worldview DVD. It's titled, What You Believe Defines You. Call now, 1-877-777-2346. That's 877-777-2346. Or by mail, P.O. Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Or simply go to reallifewithjackhibbs.org. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.